Welcome everyone, episode number eight. Check my mic, I think it's good. Hello, hello. Let's see who all's here really quick. We have, well, DIY Solar Energy, of course, the greatest moderator in the world. Notarins, is that like a notary public thing? Eduardo Martinez, hello to you. Josie Faulkner, Trap 3D, Isaac Hatchett, Chris Sr., Arizona Mountain Bike Beast, hello. See a lot of familiar names already. Again, I appreciate you guys so much for being here. Downtime Adventures, one of the fishermen. Of course, Eduardo Martinez again, Rod West. I will go through this, as always, and check out everything that everyone says. Hey, there's WH Bonnie. Hello to you. <laughs> Hello. Yes, uh, already cluing in on the, uh, on the shirt that I chose for tonight. You know, you're supposed to, as a YouTuber, you're supposed to wear your own merch to try to push that. But I don't know, you know, I wear what I like. I, I had a shirt over here. I'll, I'll show it to you a little bit. But I had one that I almost wore, but I just, I was like, this is a Seinfeld day. So yada, 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 I'm here. So let me tell you, I've got a few things on the agenda, but this is a special, a special one. Our last live stream went for three hours. That will not be the case tonight. I appreciate everyone, I appreciate everyone that stuck around for that. That was, that was arduous, but it seemed like everyone had fun. Tonight is going to be kind of like a few weeks ago, where you as live streamers get to see a new video or learn about a new video before anyone else. Because immediately following this video, following this live stream, I will be launching a brand new video. And it is, well, it's actually hidden right behind me. It is the video on this, the technically women's aluminum comp, but it's not really. I think that's why they color it kind of neutral. It's basically a way to give the aluminum comp sized frames right now because the color is so awesome. So it's a 16 inch frame. So you've got the choice of that or the 18 inch frame with the silver technically men's aluminum comp. But I know women ride that. Again, that stuff, that's all old hack, right? Now it's whoever, whatever bike you're happy on, no matter who or what you are, as long as you can have fun on it, that's what counts. So we're going to be doing that immediately after this live session, which is why I won't go for three hours, because it is 7.30 central time right now. I don't really like to launch videos super late during weekdays. I know I have before, even at 10.30, but typically I like to get them in before 8.30 or 9.30. That way I don't wake people up with notifications. That's my goal, because as I've mentioned before, oh, Food Kings OC, hello, thumbs up to y'all, appreciate it. When I first saw your name, I about freaked out. <laughs> I just saw a letter and almost freaked out. But Ryan Brooke, hello everyone. Tony One Shot, Tamale. Was that a Seinfeld thing? Tamale? I don't remember. Might be talking about something else. Very excited to see the women's aluminum comp. Sandriel, hello to you. Also a new patron. Been to the live streams here multiple weeks in a row. New patron. I appreciate you. So many crafty. Again, I'll read read all this stuff. But I have a list of things. Five. I always do five things. I have a, apparently a thing with the number five. But I want to do uh, something correct something that I messed up last time. There was a live stream or a live chat, a super chat that I totally missed. It popped up on the screen and when I was watching the replay, I looked right at it. I looked at it right as it popped up. And DIY Solar Energy popped in with something, and I immediately went down. I, I have to look at the phone, I guess, to hear. I don't know. And then lean in and look. So I did that. Totally missed this live. A $4.99 super chat that I let go. And that super chat was Christopher Lopez. And Christopher Lopez asked, what is your next bike up on the table for a project bike? Well, I don't put them on tables. Just kidding. I use my bike rack. If I had a table, that would be cool, like a motorcycle bench thing or something. But I told them probably that women's aluminum comp, because I have a name, and I'm going to float it by you guys right now. I want to make sure that this is politically correct in today's environment, right? Because I don't want to offend anyone. Everyone is welcome here at Kev Central. It's the beauty of this channel. You get to kind of build things in a frame of how you want them to be, and I want everyone to be happy and content and enjoy riding bikes together. So I've thought up this name, Project 
femme fatale. Femme fatale is an old comic book thing, an old comic book trope. And it's also, it was a movie, I think in the 80s. At least that's what I think I remember with femme fatale. So is Project Femme Fatale a good name? I, I thought it was really catchy for a project bike. I thought, well, I've never really seen anyone do a female, technically a women's bike project bike. So that might be a catchy name, Project Femme Fatale. And again, as you can see, that is a good looking bike. I think Project Femme Fatale name kind of fits. So comment and let me know what you think about that name or if that's kind of taboo right now. I don't know. Just want to make sure that it's not offensive. So let me keep going. Oh, that's why not? Every time I look at this thing, for some reason, I read DIY Solar Energy's comments. <laughs> I don't know why. It looks like something got deleted there. But. Hanson Wayne, good evening to you. Hey, Scottsboro Walmart had a blue and silver aluminum comp last weekend. That's probably this one. It's a blue grayish silver. That's probably, well, not this bike. I didn't get it in, I ordered it online. But that's Josh CK93. See you a lot. Bruh boy. Hello to you, Daniel Val, Valverde Ortiz. Hello to everyone there. So be sure to come. Hey, Thayo. I say Thayo. Thayo sent me carbicide, benzoyl, alcohol. But I say hello to you. And he thinks that is, or they think this is a horrible name for a bike. So see, that counts. So people will comment, and whoever thinks it's the best name, I will, if, if that's a good name for the majority of you, then that's what we'll go with. And also, if anyone, I want to make sure that people know that that's like, not offensive. Because like I said, it's a comic book trope, and kind of a literary trope, and I guess cinematic trope for a while. A lot of people love it. Hey, bonjour, monsieur. Hey, Eric Lodge, how are you? Appreciate that. Harry Grimley. Hello to you. Sounds like a Bond movie. It does, doesn't it? I think it would be a great bike, and I wouldn't do the lame thing of putting pink grips on it. Not going to happen. But I just, I still, I think that was nice. You got the Schwinn Boundary. Fuking OC. Fuking's OC. Good for you. Good bike. This tough score right now. Where did you get it? Did you buy it used, or did you get that from a Walmart? Because we found one. You're in the rare, rare lot. Formula Blakes. Hello to you. See the wave there. All right, so I covered Christopher Lopez. Missed the Super Chat, so Christopher, I'm so sorry. And if you come in tonight, fortunately, I poured over this. I went to his channel. He only had two videos, and they were older videos. I commented on his channel trying to get him. I'm like, I, you know, I know this is you, so I'm sorry I missed it. Fortunately, I looked at my patrons, and I had two Christopher Lopez as my patrons. Josh Lobby, another patron, kicking off Super Chats. Man, I really appreciate it. Can't tune in tonight. I had to say hi. Well, hello to you, and thank you so much. Really, so much. Another patron, a fellow patron. Josh was just telling everyone, I missed the $4.99 Super Chat for another patron, Christopher Lopez, last week. So I'm making up for it. So Christopher, if you tune into this, you get a double answer because I answered you inside Patreon. So there we go. There's Josh Lobby's Super Chat poking in, popping up. Thank you so much, Josh. And I appreciate it. So probably already gone, but thank you. Let's start with my list. Well, actually, we've already started. But let's get rolling on this list. Because, again, I, if you just tuned in, there's 63,997. If you just tuned in, I have a video that is launching immediately after this Super Chat. It's a matter of Super Chat. I keep saying that. Live stream. As a matter of fact, I've got it pulled up here. I'm going to launch it from my laptop right in front of you. So you'll know the second that it goes live. So you guys, as my XR Pros, tentatively named until I get permission, full permission, as the XR Pros here, our live stream group, the core of the core of the core of Kev Central, you guys be the first eyes to see this video. And also, super quick turnaround video. I filmed this video this morning and had it finished. I think I had it done by 11 o'clock, maybe 12 o'clock, because I did it kind of trail talk style. But it ended up being pretty, a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I'm like, man, I'm kind of impressed with what I covered on this on the little trail talk thing. And I missed every walker, jogger, and biker, and dog person on the trail. I, I didn't see a single person until I was leaving. So it worked out totally well. Quick look before I get to my list here. David Kroos, and hello to you, Ozzy Diaz. Zoom Zoom 870, hello to you. Letting the cat out of the box. So, and again, if you're near, hey, SimRig, PC27B, 
Wait, somebody mentioned Walmart. Was it, That's Lisa Taylor. Hello, Lisa Taylor. How are you? You can actually come up with a decent women's project by Kevin and we'll be very happy. Okay, Lisa. I'm going to make a project bike out of the women's project or uh, women's aluminum comp. The updated one that will be the video that's posting immediately after this. And I'm thinking about the name Project Femme Fatale. Do you think that's a cool name? And that's not offensive, right? So maybe everyone comment again. I, I need to know. I don't want to cross a line inadvertently. Want to be kind and everyone. You do know that a femme, what a femme fatale is. That's a bad omen for a bike. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is technically kind of a bad omen for a bike, but it's a good name. And plus, I'll put in, I'll, I'll write it in French. So it will look really cool. Hey, Southern Mountain Bike Trails. Yes, new video today, or new video day, correct. And Southern. <laughs> Gotta give props to our fellow Southern brethren before we start sweating ourselves to death. Because the humidity, almost here. Almost here. Robert Bard. Hey, Ontario. The name is great. Thank you. Just picked up a new Marin. Oh, nice. And they'll trail 29er today. I bet that is a great bike. Yeah, make some good bikes. There's Harry Grimley again. The HB's Tech Jay-Z. You don't mind it? Well, thank you. I don't think I've seen you in the live streams here before. I don't believe uh, David Juarez, hello to you. The Blue Ripper, I think, is a good project name. That actually is a good name. Hmm. Blue Ripper. I like that. I'm going to write down any suggestions here. And I will keep this. I'm so offended. Just kidding. Okay, so Amy Fogarty, hello to you, a regular commenter on the channel. Thank you so much. You are not offended. So that's great. Sup, Kev. Manvir Singh, hello to you. Henson Wang sounds fine to you, so a lot of people like that. Great name, for, great name for a lady bike, Southern Mountain Bike Trails, yes. But as I mentioned earlier, technically, that's they call it the women's comp. And I, I think it was just because, you know, historically the lower bar has went for female bikes. Of course, if you look at the history of that, it's kind of weird. But now we have stronger materials. So you don't have to have the high bar anymore because men's bike, you know, men's especially way back weighed a lot more because i you know if you know time we're kind of smaller now on average than people historically have been at least at the advent of cycling at least when i look at the videos some of those early videos with the little reel type thing a little reel flicker going on there's some big burly people so they had that top bar because it was all steel frames and just whatever kind of welding they did back then so now we can, with our new aluminum frames and our new technology, we can have any shape that we want. Any shape that we want, equal strength. So the women's, men's thing really doesn't play as well now. And that's why this, technically it's labeled as a women's, but it's, I'm calling it the 16 inch frame. And then the regular silver aluminum comp is the 18, excuse me, almost said 19. It's an 18 inch frame. So 16 to 18. And also a cool thing about this, I mentioned it in the video. I didn't mention it in the video. I'll put it in in subtitles. I'm going to hop up. I'm going to hop up. And I didn't ring a little bell there for our super chat friend that left us a super chat. I'm going blank on the name. I'll look at it in just a moment. But the step over height on this is the actual height of the frame is measured to the top of this tube. But when you go forward in the step over height, they did a good job engineering because that 16 inches, which is the frame height. Oh, another super chat about to pop up here. Another, the height of the seat tube, which dictates the frame size, it steps down and it goes up, but the standover is actually 16 inches. So there you know, you can know if you have a 16 inch inseam, you'd fit on this frame, more or less. Clifford Boatner Jr. Hello, Clifford Boatner Jr. Second week in a row. Let's see what you have to say here. Any tips on how to pick the right sleeve length when installing new rim brakes on a road bike? <laughs> I appreciate that you're asking the question, but when you talk road bikes, you are talking entirely to the wrong person. To the absolute wrong person. As a matter of fact, when it comes to road bike rim brakes, I had to get some supervision on, there were two spacers 
that came, the, the sleeve length. There were two spacers that came on one bike that I reviewed. Uh, are, they, are there supposed to be two here? Because this seems like it's sitting off pretty far. So I had to get guidance. Turns out there weren't. It was supposed to be that way. So I wish I could give you accurate advice. I could make up something and sound totally convincing. Totally convincing. But I'm not going to do that to you. So if you want to ask another question, I'll answer that one, but I apologize. I don't have, I don't know that. And any towing in advice, uh, is that a mistype? Or is that some road bike speak? So comment with that, because I'm unsure exactly what you're asking there. But thank you so much for the super chat. I'll ring the bell for you. And that's not loud, because it's way back there. And I hope that no one is spamming. I see some messages there. we we'll just get a quick look here, see who's here. 116 of you. Lisa Taylor. Ohio's still freezing. We had 70 degrees all week. It was 81 or 82 degrees here today. Just an hour ago, it was 82 degrees. I don't know what the high was. So, warm. Cheese. Do a review of a bike from Amazon. I've done a review of a bike from Amazon. I'm kind of scared to get in that. And I did a thing, a video, right... I can't remember when it was. But I, I put up five or six bikes. I was going to let everyone vote on a bike. And everyone did. This outroad thing one, it was just a real freakish looking front end. Actually, a road bike. Kind of like a front end on a mountain bike. It looked like a horrible bike. An absolutely horrible bike. As was the Orc that I bought, in my opinion. Horrible bike. The Orc that I bought from there and... Yeah, I had problems with, and when I tried to get a part, they just had me send the whole thing back. It's kind of weird. But, make sure I'm not missing a super chat here, because that was the thing that popped up the other day. But I let people vote, and then the pandemic hit, messed everything up, and I just, now I saw that bike the other day, and I almost bought it. But it's kind of elevated in price right now, so I'm going to wait for things to normalize a bit. Turd Ferguson, there is a... There is a, uh, God, what's his name? Uh, Burt Reynolds fan. Uh, Burt, no, I'm not bald. There's lots of hair up under here. I have it tucked. I have it tucked. I appreciate the question, but no, not yet anyway. You know, who knows? I guess we'll all get there someday. But no, I have, I have a lot of hair. It's just fine. It's the unappealing kind. The fine hair. Not funny. Yeah, it's horrible, especially in humidity. Okay. So let me get back and let me talk about my number one thing, which I almost got to a minute ago and just now getting back to. Then a reminder, new video posting right after this. So your first ones, first ones. The Ascension, the Schwinn Ascension right here. Did everyone catch that video? The first, what I feel is good, mountain bike from Target. Because Walmart has had the boundary, the taft, the aluminum comp, the axle, I mean the axle. How can you top the axle for the dollar, right? That thing, pretty nice. Pretty nice. $369? Would I pick it versus, say, an axle? Non-dropper axle? That'll be coming up in a video, so I'm going to talk about that. But it's not a bad bike at all, and it looks great. I can't, I mean, Roscoe 8, everyone, I... I couldn't remember which model it was, but I knew I had my hands on one. And I love the graphics, and somebody commented, that's the Roscoe 8, the Trek Roscoe 8 graphic. This, uh, I mean, almost a carbon copy of it. It looks so good. So awesome. What are the best disc brakes, everything outdoors? Hydraulic disc brakes. I use MT200s because they're affordable. The best, how much money you got? Because there's some really nice, really expensive brakes. So... You know, I'm not going to say which is the best, but there are a lot of good brakes. I use MT200s because they're cheap and they're effective for the way I ride. And I'll get to that at the end, number five, talking about the average rider. But this Ascension, I want to mention somehow, some way, there is, I've seen this commented, I bet a dozen times, either via my website or via Luke Kiono, Kiono? Oh, I hope I'm saying your name right. Luke, anyway, $5 Super Jet. Thank you so much. The Kid Naz. I can stock it on sale at Walmart. You should buy it after the live and do a review. $174 is not a bad price. I looked at that bike and I almost bought it, ooh, I bought it probably a year ago. 
maybe sometime within the last year, maybe even longer. I don't kind of get the, you know, the whole world is messed up with the COVID thing. So yeah, I, I consider, I'll consider it, but get But thank you so much for the super chat. I'll ring the bell for you in just a second. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it more than you can imagine. And everyone that's here, I appreciate each and every one of you, but the Schwinn sentient, there is this, I won't say myth, but 68 degree head tube angle. I have seen that commented on my website or through my website commented to me. People that have just direct emailed me. I've seen it on the channel, on my YouTube channel and com video comments multiple times. People, oh, it's a 68 degree head tube. It is not. It is a 69 degree head tube angle. I have confirmed this was twin. And I would think that the engineers that they asked that made the bike, that they're designed the bike, would know what the head tube angle is. So it is 69 degree head tube angle, not 68. So just to clarify that, I'm suspecting that there's a little bit of confusion between the axon with its 67.8 and somehow got mixed in with this. Because there's a thing, you know, everybody gets your phone, right? You do the angle. I'm going to quit trying to say that right thing. I noticed I said that a lot when I watched the video. Confirmation. Uh, the, there's the angle finder. So you get the angle finder and you put it on your phone and that's what a lot of people do to find angles. Hol horribly inaccurate. Horribly inaccurate. Because A, you have to be able to line up perfectly with right in the middle of this post that's tapered at the bottom and more narrow at the top, this tube. So you would have to make sure you were right in the middle of that spectrum. And also the bike has to be on perfectly level ground. And I mean, tires have to be aired up. Everything has to be perfect if you were going to get an angle that way. And there's a proper tool for measure. Well, I think there's a proper tool. Uh, maybe someone made this, but a rod that actually goes in, kind of mimics a steer. They might have even cut off a steer. I don't know. And then they had an angle gauge on that. And that showed a proper angle. So sans that, anything else is just kind of an educated guess. And he may be really good at educated guess and finding angles. But I had someone that claimed they were, or I'm sure they are a machinist, and probably a very good one. They were on Kev Central, so they're clearly intelligent. So they said that it was 68 that they measured it, but Schwinn says 69. And any time I've ever tried to measure with an angle finder, I can find whatever I'm looking for. So if you tell me it's a 69 degree head tube angle, I'm like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, it's 69 degree head tube angle. But if I didn't know that, I could be down to 67, up to, I mean, one, one millimeter is a drastic change degree-wise when you're measuring. So, uh, see what, 66 is all known in trails, so I see maybe some of you guys are talking about anything more extreme. Yes, thank you for, thank you for coming that, Thio. It's okay if I call you Thio. It's so much easier. It's either that or TBA. One, one of the two. But I see so many people talking about it, and I'm going to get to this too. Uh, I, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. We talked about big box bike haters and how they're running out of arguments, and now they're clinging to other things. Even after the newest Axum review, they're clinging to other things. It's so funny. I'll get to that. But people have been saying, oh, you've got to have 66 degrees on a cross country bike. Have you? I've ridden a bike with a 66 degree head tube angle, that is not all that fun. Well, any bike's fun, but it's not, it's not agile. Not agile like you're used to with the cross country bike. So that's why 69 degrees is fine with me. 67, fine with me, 67 to 69 would be fine. I prefer the uppers in 67 degrees, but kind of that sweet spot, 69 degrees, 68 degrees, although this is not 68 degrees. Just a clarification that's 69. So, covered that. And also, want to talk about chain line. A lot of people, and this goes into my second topic, which is riding gear and parts. And I don't know why I have chain line in here. So someone at some point has mentioned to me about chain line. There is proper chain line. It's like, to be for most bikes are single chain ring it's 49 i think 49 millimeters from the center of the bottom bracket if it's a 73 millimeter bottom bottom bracket to the center of the chain ring and they're, they're actual proper spec measurements but every time i've ever been in a bike shop been 
with someone that was very good with working on bikes and or was a bike mechanic or done it myself, there's an eyeball effect with the chain line. So nothing is really set in stone and there's some leeway there. So just note that when people are hammering on, on some of the specs and start talking about, oh, that's not a proper chain line. Because I use spacers. I've been all over the place on spacers with bikes. You know, you're supposed to do two and then none, or one and then one, and, and so on. I've, I've been all over the place with spacers because I get it to where I'll, I feel good with it, and it's, it doesn't sound like it's grinding against itself. So there are things, measurements, angles, chain lines. I think that's why I wrote that on there because it was kind of down in a little bit. All subjective with cycling. The important thing is that the frame that you have meets the specs that it's supposed to have. Now clearly if they made a bike with a frame and it was supposed to have a 69 degree head tube angle and it had a 67 that would be that'd be a big quality control issue but I have never seen a I'm not saying it hasn't happened but I have never seen a quality control issue with a big box bike of any caliber that would make me scared to ride it. The only exception to that was that one granite peak that had the really bad welds and had a crack in the weld. And even then, I'm pretty sure I could have ridden that for probably years and years and years without any problems. But it just spooked me a little bit. But that was one bike out of, you know how many I've reviewed and gosh knows how many I have looked at or talked to people about or seen in bike shops and so on. And I keep saying, why do I keep looking up and see Dallas on there, Eugene? I don't know why I see your name so much. I, mean, I, I think it's a blue color or something. It's one of my favorite color. So like hone in on that or something. But hey, Rice Parsons, how are you? Down, Downtime Adventures, the updated Mongoose Salvo. You know, I have that Salvo Pro. I didn't know that they had updated it. So I don't know. Twin is a full suspension on Amazon. The S29, I think it's called. That is actually a Sam's Club bike. That I've always seen that in Sam's Club. And I think that's kind of that older generation of full suspension mountain bike. That I don't think that's got the bells and whistles that we're starting to get used to on our big box bikes. So, you know, they've kind of built up. They've done something so nice now with these, with the Axom and so on. All these 2020 updates that they made and now the 2021 updates. Kind of working themselves into a point where they can't make stuff like that anymore. Because we can balk now at things that normally would have been, oh, this is okay, this is great. And now we can balk at it. Travis Mahoney. Hello to you, $5 Super Chat. Thank you so much. Let's see what you asked here. Who else wants to see a Kev Central bike build with an eBay motor? You know, I have that. I have that, and I've been so lazy on that. I have the motor that's over in the far corner over there. Uh, the motor that go for the Cranbrook, the Huffy Cranbrook. That's going on two years or something that I've had that just sitting off to the side. Totally lost interest when I found out how awesome is it this hand, this hand. How awesome e-bikes are. Totally lost interest in a smelly two-stroke eBay engine that's going to blow itself up in short order. eBay is so much better, but I'm still going to do it at some point. I'm thinking now, I was going to do it this winter, but again, this could be another two-year project. But I'm thinking, as soon as it gets, as it gets super humid outside, where I'm not wanting to pedal as much, it's going to be a lot of e-bikes and that thing. I might bring it in here, get it together. But another big thing is once I get it together and I've ran it once, you know what two-stroke stuff smells like? I don't want that in my basement. I don't want that in here. I don't want it stinking up the place like it's a mechanic shop. I like it smelling like a bike shop. So that's a problem. I don't have anywhere else to put. So I might build that and then give it to someone. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. But thank you to both you and there was, let me scroll back here. Yeah, Luke, our buddy Jono, Jono. Luke, give you guys a couple of bike bell rings. I appreciate it. I, I scooted that back because I don't want to blow your ears off with the bike bell. Because when I watched the original one where I was doing the bike bell ring, which I still can't find, I've looked for, I it was kind of loud, kind of annoying. And I've even lowered the alert volume. So hopefully that's not bad. Hey, Sonia is here. Hello, Sonia. Appreciate you being here. Dennis Wynn. 
I know how to pronounce that now, thanks to DIY Solar Energy, the greatest moderator ever. Also, pretty good battery builder. Pretty good battery builder. Eventually, he's going to have to rebuild some batteries for me, but all mine are holding in pretty good. Kerwin Warren. Tetak. Tetaki. Tetak. Hello. I don't even have a mountain bike. Just enjoy your big box bike reviews. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate you being here. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Old, man, old man's adventures. Harry the Beast is rectified. There's somebody talking. And then you have an eBay kit bike. You've had it for years. Probably got a thousand miles on it. That's really impressive. It seems like those things either work for a long time or they blow up in really short order. And the one that I've got, I'm not going to have to work over to get to it. But the one that I have, I bought black because I thought it would look good with that Huffy Cranbrook. I didn't know that black engine finish meant that they just took a Krylon can of or 99 cent spray paint and dusted it with black paint. It's going to bake off within the first 10, 20 minutes. And, but it looks really cool now, but it's not going to look good for long. And it's going to have that smell. That smell. Drew's enthused. Make sure you're staying hydrated. Somebody must be in some hot weather. And I see Miles Kitlets. You have some brake problems? Oh no. You review the Crest 34 fork. I've never heard of the Crest 34 fork. What is that? Is that some brand I'm supposed to know of? Crest 34 fork. I'm going to note that. And also, got a lot more viewers right now than we had earlier. I'm working on a name for the aluminum comp, the women's 16 inch aluminum comp and for project status and I'm thinking project femme fatale got some votes so be sure to get your vote in and also make sure that that's not offensive so get your vote in and let me know on that because I kind of like the name I'm not gonna lie I kind of like the name but I'll go with anything else someone else suggested the blue ripper so we'll see what works out Crest is a giant in-house sport brand that's why I do not know T-Force because when will the women's aluminum comp, Dennis win? When will the women's aluminum comp video release? Oops, cap lock, caps lock. Uh, that will release right after this. You guys will be the first eyes to go on it because I have my laptop queued up here, my MacBook. I have that queued up, and as soon as this live stream ends, I will be on, live on stream here publishing that live. So the second that goes live, you guys can watch it. So you'll get to see that. Shot it early today. And it's kind of an impressive little bike. A couple things about it you'll see that kind of called out. But now I've forgotten what, oh yeah, T-Force. The Crest, you know, Giant, I don't have a Giant dealer locally. It'd be an hour and a half or so to get to the nearest Giant dealer. So that's why I don't know, because I'm, I like Giant bikes. I know they make good stuff. Everyone I've ever seen has been really nice. And I'm pretty sure I've ridden a couple here and there. Almost positive I have so many now. It's all starting to blur. It's all starting to blur. Peter Banta. Well, hello to you. I see you in the live stream a lot. Look at collective bikes from the last time. No, I didn't, Rice. But I'm going to note here, collective bikes. Thank you. And I even re-watched the stream and I saw that and still didn't do it. So I'll, I'll look now. Or not now, but after this stream. What's your favorite Seinfeld episode? Well, my Tom Ward, good, good eyeing there. Of course, not hard to not, hard to not see, right? Probably the uh, Festivus episode. I forget the name of the episode, but the episode with Festivus, because there was so much that went on with that one episode, and Festivus became a big part of my life. I have a Festivus poll, put it up every year. I had a big one that I made myself for years. When I used to have parties, I used to have festivist parties, and then mom bought me a little tabletop one. That's what I use now since she passed away. So that's that's what I what I use now. But I still have my original one as well that I made. It's looking through here again. I'll read everyone. Destroyer of tubes. That is a cool name. That is a really good. You try crush core tires. I would if I um, pony up the dough to buy some. Yeah, I totally would. I've looked at looked those up. Got to do bike bell rings. Yes, I do. 
Did I miss a bike bell ring with a with a super chatter? Thought I had rung rung for everyone. Project Seafoam Slasher. Ozzy Diaz. Seafoam Slasher. I don't know about the slasher thing with the YouTube. All the YouTube, you know how they get with stuff. Some wording. So I, I don't know, but I, I really do like it. Think about getting one. Hey, somebody said they're a big fan. Well, thank you, Amanda. Amanda, yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Someone has an aluminum comp. Want to swap the fork out to a 15 milliliter through axle? Would it be worth it to get a new wheel? Have a local shop, but it, if you're going with the through axle, I wouldn't waste my time with the factory wheel and getting a new hub put in. I'd buy a different wheel. Probably cost you. Probably be cheaper. This is my local bike shop to thread a hub there. That's not a cheap, you know, that's a slow thing. I'm sure someone can do it fast, but anyone I've ever, I've ever seen do it, it was slow. Again, go through all these chats. Jilly Bean, 860. It's the longest bike ride you've ever completed. <laughs> DIY Solar Energy, what's the longest bike ride I've ever completed? Because I'm pretty sure it was probably with you. Because we used to ride forever. Forever. That's when we rode from. One CD across the bridge to the other and back. Yeah, but we rode all over that day as well. So, yeah, there's no telling how many miles that was. I don't know. I don't know. Good question, though. And I see... Hey, Joshua Tree. This is our buddy Scott Evans. Hello. This will pop up on the screen in just a second. Thank you, Scott Evans, for another super chat. Thank you for being here. Thank you to everyone for all these super chats and all the chats. Hey, Bowling Green, Kentucky. I... Don't you guys have a really good skate, uh, bike park in Bowling Green? Isn't there like an indoor mountain bike park? Is that in Bowling Green? Because me and a guy that I used to ride with that was on a few early videos, we almost went to one of those. I think, pretty sure it was in Kentucky. But there was the Super Chat for Scott. And someone asked me to ring the bike bell. So I'm going to get back here. Thank you, Scott Evans. Thank you, everyone that's super chatted. I don't know about that whole walking back thing. Seems kind of annoying for you guys. Not to me. It seems like it's better when I can reach over and do it. But again, I don't want to be too loud with the bike belt. And as I mentioned last time, I promised, I lied to you guys. I promised I was going to hook up my stream lab, or my stream deck, so I could just press buttons and do sounds and transitions and all this stuff. I put that thing, I couldn't find it. I looked all over for that thing. I found it right before I set up for this live, live stream. You can't see it, but this is a TV. I have a webcam on top of the TV and a big TV, and it's mounted to the wall. And below that, I have a stack of Craftsman storage bins and some boxes on top of that and a flat piece of wood with my keyboard and my mouse. And I had slid it up under there. Yeah, I found it, I guess, right about the time I sat down. I think I was talking to DIY Solar Energy when I found it. Or I just found, I can't remember. But, yeah. So, thank you to everyone again for being here. Let me get back to my list. Because we've got a video coming live. You guys will be the first one to see it right after this. So I want to burn through this list because we've already been going for 40 minutes. And I'm going to try to make this a little shorter today. Number two, let's talk riding gear. Not professional riding gear, but riding gear for the average person. Because people ask me all the time, what shoes do you wear? What outfit do you wear? Do you wear, you know, the little, what do they call that? The, where you got the, the onesie thing, where you got the uni thing, where you've got the spandex shorts and the bib overalls thing that you put a shirt over. I don't ride in any of that. I ride in what I'm comfortable in. Now, I do have some Canary, I think is how you say it, some Canary mountain bike shorts that I've had forever. And they're padded mountain bike shorts. I have some of the Bayleaf liners that you purchase on Amazon. I need to add those to my Amazon store. I have the Bayleaf liners, and I'll either wear the mountain bike shorts or those liners under just regular shorts. And people say not to wear baggy shorts because they'll get caught on your saddle. True, but I do it anyway. I wear whatever I'm comfortable in. And in the middle of the summer here, it's so humid. I do wear a wicking shirt, not a, not a cotton t-shirt. I do wear a wicking shirt, which I'm still not convinced those make you any cooler, like as far as temperature-wise. 
but that's what I wear in shoes. I wear these cheap George Vans wannabe slip-ons that you can buy from Walmart for 10 bucks. 10 bucks and under. I'll wear those. Jelly Bean 860, so just a second ago. And I like the Harley Quinn icon. I look forward to your future videos. Well, thank you so much. I look forward to you being part of the channel. Thank you so much. I hope you're subscribed. I hope everyone is subscribed. And that you give this video a thumbs up. That helps me with the YouTube algorithm and all that. And I also want to mention I do have Patreon. And I'm slowly adding more content to the Patreon. More little behind the scenes things. Some people got to see an e-bike that I'm, I'm a little proud of getting put together. You have to see, I count six air pumps in the background. Well, you, Dave D, are not seeing all the air pumps that I have right here that go this way, nor the five or six that I have up in my house. I've been waiting. I'm going to do a pump roundup, and I've been waiting for this one company to send me a pump, and they sent me two or three pumps, and I thought, they sent me two pumps, and then I thought, okay, well, this is good. I'll, I'll do the bike roundup tomorrow. Well, the next day, another pump arrived. And then a few days after that, another pump arrived. And I'm still getting stuff from them. I'm still getting stuff. So I don't know. Not all of it's pumps. It's Blackburn, this brand that's at Walmart. And I don't know if I'm going to do it all in one video or space it out. But some of it's pretty decent. i got to admit, some of it is pretty decent. But there is there a new champ? You still prefer the Bond Traeger? Man, kind of got a story with that Bond Traeger. Kind of got a story with it. And even the new one, I've got that expensive Von Traeger over here. And yeah, I'm not that impressed. impressed. I see somebody talking about knee pads. I don't wear knee pads. I bought knee pads. I have elbow pads. I even, somewhere I think I've got shorts that have the armored sides because I ride by myself. But I've never put them on. I know I should. But I have never put them on. I ride in the knockoff. Vans shoes because they've got a good flat bottom. They work great on race face Chester or Fuka pedals. I wear wicking t-shirts and whatever shorts I want to ride it, wear. And in the winter, I wear sweatpants. And I have one pair of sweatpants that, man, even in the winter, they're baking. Baking. Straddle Champ 1200 ride naked. No, 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 no. No, no, no. No, funny though. Hey, Trekkerous. How are you, compressor or hand pump? I have a compressor right over there. I mean, it, I've got it scooted out in the middle of the floor. I have a compressor. It's what I use a lot. I've got the air thingy, official term. But also, I want to mention clipless. A lot of people tell me I should be mountain biking in clipless pedals. I am not in any way, shape, or form a fan of that on mountain bike trails. If you are, more power to you. But I just know... I can't count the amount of times that I have come to a stop on a mountain bike trail and you know you kind of hit a root or something and you just can't get your foot down fast enough. So you fall over. Or you get it down and you barely catch yourself. I can't imagine having to unclip. And they say, oh well you do, you won't think about it. It'll just naturally happen. Everyone that I've ever talked to that ran clipless pedals at some point or another has fallen over. And one guy's name was Jeff, awesome guy. I really wish he did. Try to get back up with him. He's in Mississippi, and we rode the, uh, whatever, some some trail they have there. I forget the name of it. But we rode this trail there. It's kind of a repurposed railway thing, I think. Really nice. But I mentioned that he had put clipless pedals on. He had ridden them for quite a while. He got really used to them. Just that instant little click and undo. And he said that he was on the trail, and there was this one section where there was an intersection that cars could cross. And the bikes had to stop. And he said he was coming up and he looked at the car and they were slowing down as he was slowing down. So he thought for sure they were going to let him go. Well, they started to go. And he said he stopped right in front of them. And he's wiggling his feet, but he couldn't get on a clip. And he said that they stopped their car, made direct eye contact with him. As he fell over and disappeared from their sight. They got out of the car and ran around. Oh my gosh, are you okay? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Just my pride. Just my pride. <laughs> so I'm not a fan of clipless for mountain bike trails. Long way of saying that. And backpacks. I've also had people, I don't know if you wear a backpack, Fookers, everything outdoors. I really like Fooker pedals. And they commented on one of my last videos. Fooker pedals did. I was shocked. They, Fooker, you should sponsor Kev Central. Because I like pedals. Especially those needle bearing ones. But backpacks. I have had professional riders, people that do cyclocross and things like that, tell me, 
you don't want a regular backpack on your back. I've got just this little cheap backpack that I bought at Walmart, some outdoors trails or something like that, trail something. And I put all my camera and filming equipment in there when I'm out riding. And I've had more than one, but one in specific. You don't want to do that. That'll kill your back. You've got to get a specific mountain bike backpack. I looked at those specific mountain bike backpacks, and they're about this wide. They're about this wide on screen. This is looking far wider than it actually is. They're really narrow and not very deep. No way I could put any of my camera stuff in there, or not much of it. So I just use a regular backpack so far. You know, knock on wood. Oh, got wood right there. I was going to reach up seven feet and try to reach wood, but there, so far, so far, so good. So that's what I do. Comment. I want to know what riding gear, you've never seen my face. Well, now you have. So how you like that, huh? Pretty bad. Alton's Outdoors. So yeah, thank you again for everyone, everyone that is here. And again, I want to mention right after this, if you just came in, I'm posting a new video, so you'll be the first eyes to lay on, and I'll, I'll make it live as we go. So let me let me quickly drop into chat here, because as I mentioned, if it sounds like I'm rushing, I am. Uh, I like to stick around, and I appreciate all the super chats and everything, and all the interaction, but I want that video out. I really do. And I want to see, and you guys, I want to comment. I'm going to be probably in the chat, well, I always am, for the first few minutes of a video. And I want to see what you guys think about it, because I did this in a the trail talk style. I hadn't done one of those in a couple of months. You like Fooker Flats, Mark Blackburn, Old Man Adventures. So let's see, your wife bought you a 510 Adidas. You slip on shoes, awesome. That is awesome. Mountain bike KGM. Sonia, and they're done that, talking to someone. What Patreon tier will you knock me out with a rock? <laughs> you know, I only have one Patreon tier, just the $2 thing. I never uh, never really doubled down on that Patreon thing. It's just kind of a way for people to support the channel and get a sticker. But I'm slowly, maybe slowly, some point in the future, maybe I'll do something. Noted the lag and we'll report the issue. Is there lag? DIY Solar Energy, is there still lag? There's not currently, but it was tremendous. Okay, how long did it last? Uh, 15, 20 seconds, maybe 30 seconds. Okay, all right. Well, one of those things. There we go. There's Out and Outdoors. Stephen Smith, hello to you. Of course, I went right past your message. There it is. Waste our better packs works. Yeah, I used to wear a hydration pack when me and DIY Solar Energy rode, and even long after that, now I just carry bottles of stuff in my backpack. Uh, hey, see ya, everything outdoors. Thank you for being here. Dean Hurlbrink. Long rides, you wear a water bag backpack. Yeah, the, the hydro, the camelback. Andrew Singleton, hello to you. Cataract surgery has proved successful. This is going to be the year I try road biking. Well, congratulations on the successful surgery. I'm glad that worked out for you. And you're going to be trying road bikes. So the summer of road biking, not the summer of George, the summer of road biking. I'm going to say that. I think every live stream the summer of something. So David grab it. Shimano pedals, the ones without the spacers. That must be what you use. D-Ride clipped. I'm sure he's talking to someone else because I just talked about that. Hydration backpacks again for Food Kings OC. Kept Central airing of grievances would be an excellent theme for a live stream. Oh my gosh. You know what I'm going to do? Okay, DIY Solar Energy. I have one request from you. Make a note to remind me to set a reminder because I want to do on Festivus Day. I want to do try to do a live stream, either coming up to that or on that day. And I want to do an airing of grievances episode for, <laughs> for a live stream. That is a great idea, Amy Fogarty. You, I can tell, you be, <laughs> you're a good fan, a good fan of Seinfeld. And I appreciate that because we're a special clique. Yeah, I had a really good friend. We hung out for a year or so, and she, I tried and tried to get her into Seinfeld. It just wasn't funny to her. And I couldn't understand. I'm like, how is this not funny to you? How is this not funny? And she, I mean, and she tried. She tried. I, I, matter of fact, Rocky, I'm a huge Rocky fan, Rocky Balboa. And when the Rocky... I forget, Rocky Balboa, when the Rocky Balboa movie came out, 
I introduced her to the original Rockies, and she totally got drawn in by it. And then I took her to the theater to see Rocky Balboa. Hmm. I'm not going to say this, because it'll be a spoiler if anyone hasn't seen it. Of course, it's 10 years old now, I think. So, but she cried right out of the gate. I can't believe you didn't tell me. I can't believe you didn't tell me. But yeah, she didn't like Seinfeld. So that's why we're no longer friends. Is that, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, but probably should be. Because you gotta like Seinfeld, right? Crafty. Best budget tires for front and rear climbing downhill. Climbing and downhill. I like Schwalbe. I like Racing Ralphs. Femfetal sounds good to t -talk. But I don't think it's, and you don't think it's offensive and appropriate. I mean, you look really attractive. Right, for that name, it had to be really attractive. That, I agree. I agree. But uh, back to, whoever, hey, wait, is it somebody's birthday? I, you know, somebody, must be somebody's birthday. So happy birthday, Tom. Remember, Tom Heron, happy birthday to you. Wish you could stay to the end and celebrate my birthday with my wife and kids. Well, happy birthday. Happy birthday. I get some bell And I don't think... And for the last Super Chat, because I don't think I rang it for them. But they, yeah, happy birthday. You know, that's, that's good. And now go spend some time with your wife and kids. But be sure you come back and watch the video that I'll be launching here in probably about seven minutes. I'm going to cut out the take ten. I was going to do take ten tonight, but I'm going to cut that out. So I want to... Jump really quick, and again, I will go back and watch this and read everyone's comments, so I appreciate it. Keep coming. Anything that you got. Anything you got. So I'll go another seven minutes. There's a super chat. I'll extend it by a couple of minutes. But I want to recap. We talked about the big box bike haters last time. We could almost talk about this every time. My wife never understood the airing of the Seinfeld, I guess the airing of grievances. Never, oh, she never understood Seinfeld. We're just going to have to get a new wife. I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. Sanctity of marriage. Sanctity of marriage. If George Costanza's parents could make them. <laughs> so, we talked about the big box bike haters and how they're losing all their arguments. And they hung on to that frame sizing. Did you guys notice that there were a few people that have commented about frame sizing and how that's not that big a deal? I was like, all of a sudden, that's not that big a deal, but it was like their linchpin. And now they're saying... That the important thing is that it has a through axle. It needs a through axle. So what's going to happen if we get big box bikes with through axle, which I'm sure at some point, about to drop this, which I'm sure at some point, hopefully, it's going to happen, but I don't, I don't foresee it anytime soon. And I don't know anything, so I don't think um, I'm saying anything there. But I, I wrote down here something. I think I can sum these people up. And I'm not, I'm not trashing them, because everybody's opinions are welcome here at Kev Central. But I think... I have the, the haters that just won't accept that it could be an okay bike for many people. Because again, most of our needs are not what, you know, fly through the air and trying to do supermans and stuff like that off jumps. But I have a buddy, a buddy, and as long as I can remember, he has been a Miami Hurricane fan. A hardcore avid Miami Hurricane, I mean, since I've known him, and I've known him since school, like I think 10th grade, 9th grade, I think 9th grade was when I met him. He has been a hardcore Miami Hurricanes fan. He's never lived in Miami to my knowledge. I don't think he's ever even been there. But he is a Scarface fan, so I don't know. He's always been a Mafia fan, like the Drug Runner movies, like the big, all the big cartel stuff. He's always been a fan of that kind of stuff, so maybe, I don't know. But he is a huge Miami Hurricanes fan. I am a BYU fan. I'm an Alabama fan, Roll Tide as well, but I'm also a BYU fan. And when we were younger, BYU played Miami. And he talked trash leading up to that game. Miami was ranked number one. They were supposed to just roll over BYU. But one thing BYU does well is their stadium is really high, and they get teams from, like, say, Florida to come play them at their stadium. And by the third quarter, they're winded way more than they would normally be. And BYU can play a pretty good match against most of these teams, most of the time. But that one time, he had talked trash leading up to that game. The game happened, BYU beat him. 
He didn't answer my calls. I went to his house. Every light was off. I was beat. I knew it was in there. I was beating on the windows. He refused to answer me. And I kind of think that that relates to the big box bike haters that won't admit that with their certain circumstances and the right people that a big box bike, even non-modified, will be okay. But especially some of the newer bikes are pretty good. The Axum is a good bike, in my opinion, and many other people's opinion, opinion and experience. The Axum is a good bike. So I think that it's like the football hate thing where you just won't accept that the other team won. Just refuse to accept it. And I'm not saying we've totally won over everything with our big box bikes, because there are some really nice bike shop bikes. And of course, if you have the money to buy a thousand dollar bike, you should do that. Not buy a big box bike and upgrade it. That's I upgrade over time. Every bike you've ever seen me do. It's taken me a while to put together parts with maybe one or two exceptions. You're a hater. Okay, this trekkers. You're a hater of crummy bikes, regardless of where they come from, but not all big box bikes are crummy. Thank you, Trekker. See, there's an enlightened individual. An enlightened individual. Go Cougs. Southern Mountain Bike Trails. That is right. Go Cougs. And, you know, that's a, the, the why. Yeah, go Cougs. So awesome. Whenever they come around, my dad and me always go to see. I got to go. Most, the most recent was two years ago when they beat Tennessee. At Neyland Stadium. My first time ever going to Neyland Stadium. Amazing place. But And I've always been anti-Tennessee. But now, I kind of, I like their atmosphere. It's a pretty good atmosphere. Especially when we won. Pretty, pretty good. But let me knock through this because we're, what, two minutes away now. Two minutes away. Andrew Singleton, Sean A. Garrison, the best pal, just bought a $4,000 Nor Norco. Wow. That's a lot. Yep, 1990, BYU 28, Miami 10. Stephen Smith, thank you. That would be the match. That would be the match. Hey, Mr. Wasco. Costco Wasco. James Wasco, I have to do that in my head. If the bike ain't yours, then don't worry about it. Very true words. Very, very true words. All right, here we go. And Mr. Wasco, if you don't know, as soon as this video is over, and it will be very shortly, I am going to launch a brand new video right in front of you guys, and you guys will get to check that out. And it is on this women's 16-inch frame aluminum cup that I am going to make a project bike out of, my first women's bike project. And I've got the name Femme Vital that I'm throwing out there. And I'm taking the vote, so be sure to comment if you like that name. Project Femme Fatale. I think it's got a ring to it. I think it's got, but I want to make sure it's not offensive. I see someone talking about Ohio State and North Carolina basketball. You know, I'm not a huge basketball fan, but you are. Good for you. And a $5,000 bike, good for you. For the rest of us, let's see the rising tide. Here we go. Oops, Miami was ranked number one. Oh, yeah, you get the score wrong. Yeah, 28-20 Miami was ranked number one. Yes. Okay, so I want to talk about, because we've talked about big box bikes, we've talked about gear a little bit. I want to talk about the average rider, because there is a huge, huge misconception. And I think in our own minds, maybe we make that own misconception about ourselves. Because I always say, I'm probably more like you than you think I am, or than you think you are. Because for years, I thought that I was doing super awesome stuff out on the trails. And then I started a bike YouTube channel, and I started filming the stuff that I do, and I started realizing that those jumps that when I'll hop off something, I don't film a lot of that, but when I do take a little, and it'll be small ones, but when I do take a small little jump, in my mind, I was way higher off the ground and landed way smoother than it looks like I do on camera. So that's why I don't want to upload that stuff. So as the average rider, let's just think about what the average rider is. The average person, and this harkens back to the people that say you've got to have a X dollar bike to have fun on bikes. And remember, the average person starts out on a big box bike. I, if we did a poll here, I would be probably safe to say that 90% plus of us started out with a big box bike. Whether that was our parents bought us a big box bike or when we... Got into adulthood, we quit riding bikes for a while and thought, I'm going to get back into biking. I want to see if this mountain bike thing's any fun. Probably bought a big box mountain bike and took it to a very basic trail just to see. Just to see if you're going to like it. 
and then thought, okay, well, I spent 200 bucks there, but now I know that I want that $1,000 bike. So I think that that's the case. But also, remember, a lot of bike owners, most bike owners, are seasonal. There's not a lot of us that ride all year round. And it was the same thing. I, I've mentioned this before. I've been a moped and a scooter guy and Vespas. And we had a little Vespa club kind of thing that we wouldn't call it an official club. Called ourselves the Scooter Hooligans. Just kind of wrote it, or at least I coined that term. Tried to get the catch on. Only a handful of us used it. But we would ride around on our vintage Vespas. And even then, we were more active than most people. But we didn't ride all the time. And most people don't ride when it rains. Most people don't ride when it's super hot. Most people definitely don't ride when it's super cold. If you live up north, it gets slippery. Two wheels and ice and snow don't mix well together. So think about that. The average rider rides seasonally during, like right now, we're at peak. We're getting into that peak riding season. Now through about the end of June is peak riding season. You get beyond that and it starts getting hot. And in the south here, it starts getting humid and people quit riding less, quit doing some things outdoors. You go like, we have a river bottom, so you go to the water, you get on a boat, something like that. But riding, most people don't. And most people that ride don't even ride. Someone asked earlier, was it Amy Fogarty? Someone asked earlier what the longest ride, was that Lisa, Lisa Taylor? Someone asked, you started on a Huffy human powered bicycle, awesome. Yeah, I think, I'm trying to remember my first bike. I think it might have been Puppy or Mongoose. Or, hey, Cobra Kyle. Hello to you. Hello to everyone. Again, I'll, yeah, Harry Grimley, I see a lot of names here. But most people only go for little rides around their block. Little short rides. Most people. So most people are very seasonal, go on very short rides, and trail riding seldom. Even people that buy big box, or not big box, local bike shop mountain bikes, most of those that I know don't ride on the trail or ride on the trail once or twice and say they're a mountain bike rider. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you say, yeah, you know, I'm a mountain bike rider. I ride, yeah, I've ridden on the trail, but then they really haven't been out there maybe a couple of years. That's probably more average. Well, I know it is. That is more average and more common than not. So let's add those things together. Very seasonal. Most people don't ride that far. They don't spend long amounts on the bike. And think about this. How many people have bought a bike and the first thing that they start asking is, hey, what's a comfortable seat? And then they start getting wider and wider with their saddles until they're basically got a lazy boy cushion that they're sitting on and they're still complaining. Because if you're not used to it, you know, I'm going to admit, it's not the most comfortable thing in the world to sit on a bike saddle for a long amount of time. So most people, it's very seasonal, even don't even ride when it rains. Ride just short distances around the block, maybe with their kids. Hit the trail just a couple of times. So now, think about big box bikes. It's getting very legitimate for not only people like me and people like many of you, that ride more, but for the average person, why would they, where's the justification for buying that super nice bike? Unless you just want it and you have the money, that's fine, but the justification. So you're seeing all these things. It's a, it's a big circle that encompasses what Kev Central has become, and that is budget cycling. But again, I do even more non-budget bikes sometimes, or not more. I do non-budget bikes and now e-bikes. So it's a, it's a big circle, but there are so many of us under this tent. I don't ridicule each other, but just know who the average rider really is. If you're being honest with yourself, many of you are probably, I mean, even myself, I have a YouTube bike channel, but I don't ride every day. There are days sometimes that I don't ride. There are days that I get up and I just like exercising. There are days you get up and you just like, at 7.30, I don't feel like getting up and exercising today. And, you know, that's easy to slip into multiple days, but we're all human. It's just human nature. I probably ride more than the average person that I've just described. But still, think about that. There's averages, real averages. So, 
All that said, I need a Lazy Boy recliner on my back. I actually saw a picture where somebody did that on a, I think it was on a, on a Vespa. Somewhere overseas they had done it. So I'm just going to take a quick look here. Doug's e-bike, hello to you. My very first a Space Invaders Huffy. Wow, so cool. Good note, my mom was a huge Space Invaders fan. A huge Space Invaders fan. So I think about her out at the mountain bike trail. I don't think I've taken a picture of it and posted on the channel. I sent it to my sister. But one of the posts has the little Space Invaders ghost on it out at the trail. They've named the trail something. I forget what the name is. But by the way, our local trails, I need to cover that. Yeah, like Wildwood. I need to talk about Wildwood in an upcoming upcoming live checks. Man, a lot of changes happening out there. And so for the good. Dave Montreal. Well, you don't have to... You don't have to worry about leaving Dave Montreal because I'm about to launch this video. So I want to thank everyone that's been part of this live chat. Thanks so much. Be sure to give this, or live stream, be sure to give this a thumbs up. Thank you so much to all the Super Chatters. Ring the bell a couple of times for the Super Chatters. And once for everyone that's been part of this live stream. Now, let me get this pulled up here. Do my finger thing to log in. That sounded bad. Go to my content, and I am going to make this public. And there we go. It is live. Go and enjoy the video on this. The women's aluminum comp, which is that 16-inch frame aluminum comp. Thank you so much for being part of Kev Central. And if you haven't already, I hope you subscribe and notification bell, all that stuff. Thank you so much. Now go watch this video, and I'll see you guys in the chat for that video. And now I'm going to end the stream. But as usual, I'm going to meet.